So, you want to etch your own PCB. Before we start, you're going to need a few things. A blank, copper-coated PCB. A scouring pad or steel wool. Some toner transfer paper. If you get this from eBay, it'll probably come tightly rolled and have to be placed under something heavy for about a year to straighten it out. Some masking tape. A clothes iron or laminator. I got one second hand for five bucks and used a Dremel to remove a few bits of plastic so the boards would fit. Some hydrogen peroxide and hydrochloric acid for etching the board. Acetone for removing the toner. A small drill bit if you're using through hole components. One millimeter was the smallest I could find and works decently. And a laser printer, but not this one. This one's shit. You first want to generate your artwork. I used KeyCAD to lay out a simple 12 volt boost converter. You'll need to experiment with track sizes to find what your printer is capable of. I can get 025 millimeters without much trouble, but I prefer to stick to larger sizes where possible. Then, set your printer to the highest possible resolution and toner density, and print to the glossy side of the toner transfer paper. Laser printers aren't designed for printing on glossy paper, and there's a risk that the toner will come off and break your printer, but I haven't had any problems yet. Clean the board with the scouring pad or steel wool, then place the paper face down on the copper coated side of the board, and stick down a couple of edges with masking tape. Set the iron to its maximum temperature, and iron the paper for around a minute with a consistent pressure, or run it through the laminator a few times. In my experience, a laminator will give a better result if you have a decent printer, but if your printer doesn't output much toner, the laminator will leave small holes in the transfer that when etched will give a pitted look. Using an iron allows for a much higher temperature and pressure, which will fill in most of the gaps. If you have any small cracks or holes in the toner, you can fix them with a permanent marker. Cut the board to size, then in a well ventilated area, add the hydrogen peroxide to a non-metallic container, then add an equal quantity of hydrochloric acid. The resulting solution should be clear, but mine has a reddish brown coloration, probably due to contaminants in the acid. Immerse the board in the solution for a few minutes, until the uncovered copper has been removed. The acid should go green while this is happening. Mine stayed brown. When the board is finished etching, rinse it with water, then use a cloth with acetone to remove the toner. You can now drill holes for any through hole components, then solder the parts to the board. There's no solder resist, so watch out for accidentally bridging traces with solder. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed and want to see similar videos, then please subscribe. It would help me out a lot.